Okay. I can feel this is a great group. At 9.40 on Thursday night, we're still going to learn something, right? Yeah. So, um, so it's still early, right? Yeah. We are very glad today, as uh, we know, the guest is going. So right now, we have more talented people on stage. So um, we are very glad. We are all glad to, to learn from the number one, the best of the best. So please help me to welcome our global number one, the best mentor, my good friend, Kim Wee. Hi. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Ron. Thank you very much. This is a serious crowd. <laughs> so actually, this is the most important meeting of all. And uh, I'm a little casual. It's been a long, long day. But um, I, I want to congratulate you, and, and I want to thank you for being here, especially at this late hour. And so this is what we call the meeting after the meeting. And so what great things are usually done through meetings like this. And so what I'm going to talk about tonight, and I'll try to accomplish in one hour, is how we conduct the meetings. because. You know, the meeting is the heart of the business, and that's how you expand and build your business. And, and I hope that each and every single one of you, you are here because you have opt to and want to commit to be one of the speakers, right? Yes. Okay? Yeah. Now, I know Patrick goes, no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> and Patrick, you get comfortable. You know, actually, I was thinking, you know, Patrick can have one of the most compelling stories. He's very believable, but he just needs a master on, on learning how to tell that. And so, but before I talk about the little details of being a speaker, a lot of times people, when, when they look at this type of business, they go, wow, you know, I'm an awesome speaker. I'm a motivational speaker. Actually, the best speaker is someone that comes from the heart, with that passion, with that belief. And so there's certain psychology I want to explain to you guys why we do things certain ways so that we can get the job done effectively. Okay, now, so I want you to think back on day one. When you first joined this opportunity, or take a look at any opportunity for that matter, usually 90% of the time people have three questions in their head. And I bet you, most of you in this room, you also have those three questions, okay? So the design, the, the psychology of the presentation is to answer those three questions effectively. If you have answered the question effectively, you got the job done. You, you got the, 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 the sale made, okay? So number one, the three questions <clears throat> in most people's mind when they attend a meeting just like this is number one thing is, is this thing for real? Okay, so is this deal for real? I mean, you know, your friend told you about it, you come to take, check it out. So first question in the head is, okay, fine, I, I hear what I heard, but I wanna know if this deal is for real, okay? Now, number two, this deal's real, but what's in it for me? So people, let's say, for example, told, people told you how great Genesis is and you wanna check it out, this deal for real. Now, okay, it's a real deal. Now, what can I gain out of it? Most people, including me, all of us, when you look, check on opportunity, I want you to think back. Is this true? Like, do you think, what's in it for me? Okay, so <clears throat> what's in it for me? Okay, number three question they have is, can I do this? Now, you might have something that's really phenomenal, but if people can't do it, what good does it do? Let's say there's some career, some, some businesses that makes a lot of money, but it requires a gazillion dollar of investment. You know, they feel like they can't do it, right? So if you can answer these three questions successfully, 99% of the time, you got a sale. So how do we do that? Now, we only got one hour of time span to get the job done, okay? So we have one hour. The time frame is one hour to answer these, these three questions, okay? Now keep in mind when we target a meeting just like this, we wanna target the masses, a blanket target, okay? So one hour to get a job done. So to understand the psychology of the meeting, the way we design it is to answer these three questions, okay? Now, one hour, we have one hour to accomplish, to answer those three questions. And most of the time, when people buy something, do you think people buy things logically or they buy things emotionally? Emotional. Emotionally. Emotions are what makes a sale. And so our objective in a meeting is to tee up that, that, get the emotion to climb up, okay? So, because logic has no energy. Logic is just answer to curiosity, perhaps, but logic won't get people enough of a push to make that, that purchase, to make that buy. That's why when I asked for this speaker training, I'm, I'm glad you guys cooperated. It's really for leaders in the room, because I don't want people to get the, especially brand new people, to have the wrong idea of what type of training we're doing. So it's important when we do certain type of training that we kind of follow the rules, and that people have been through a while so they understand what we're doing. Okay, now, so 
Our goal objective is to answer those questions and break by bringing up the emotions, okay? So because emotion carry energy. It, it, you know, logic is through stories, through, through facts. Logic are facts. And facts only tell. But it's stories and emotions that sells, okay? So I want you to think back, and, and we have some new faces here, that like for example, when you buy a new car, Okay, what usually, when, when, when you go buy a car, what, what, what do you think the car salesman will do? They say, you know what, why don't you take a spin, take it for a spin, you know, test drive, right? So they get you in the car, they open the door, and they get you in the seat, and for what, do you, what do they want you to do? Experience. experience it, they would experience through the emotions. Wow, feel this wheel, smell the leathers, right? So they're getting you what, emotion, they're working you, okay? So, because people buy emotion, emotionally, very rarely, I mean like 99% of the time, no salesman will open up the hood and say, hey, you know what, dude, check out the engine. Yeah. I mean like, if they ask you to do that, I'm like, you lost me already, okay? And nobody's gonna break out the brake pads and show you the brake pads. Those are logic, those are details. But how people make a sales through emotions, so now, you have a brand new person here, okay? When they look at an opportunity, this is the timeline, okay? We have one hour to get the job done, okay? Why one hour? Because if you go on and on and on first, most people are busy. And secondly, if you go, and most people's attention can only with, withstand so long. You can sit there for so long. So if you pass one hour, usually, typically, people's emotions are going down. Their attention is going down, getting late or whatnot, okay? So we have one hour to get the job done, and this is the emotion line, okay? Emotion, okay now, so when a brand new person coming in at the very beginning checking this thing out, their emotion not high right here, because they don't know what to expect and they have carried that three question in their head, right? So our job is to build up the emotion, to bring it in one hour, to bring it to the emotional peak. So why do you suppose we do the testimony at the very end? Because that's the emotion at the very peak and people buy what? Emotionally. And I want you to think back as you look, at, look back at the business. When you attend a BOM or OPP, what's the, what's the most thing that people remember? The story, it's the testimonials. Oh wow, you know, like, you know, in the beginning people were, wow, that's Tina's story, wow, that's Lee Ming, oh, that's Yvonne, that's Samson. All these people's stories, that's what, that's what people remember, okay? So that's why we do it at the very end. That's because it's story that sell, okay? Now, so we do it, bring up the emotional curve by breaking up the presentation into three parts, okay? Now, first part that we do, well actually four parts, okay, if you break it down to detail, four parts. We have four, four parts usually in a, in a meeting to get this job done, okay? Now, number one thing that we do first in the very beginning is someone that we have a host, okay? A host <clears throat> or an MC or an MC and an a, a, a MC does nothing more than to set, you know, just kind of create the atmosphere. Welcome everyone, set the tone for the meeting. Okay, now, the MC, when the MC comes up, his or her only job is to welcome everyone and say it with a smile, okay, welcome everyone. And then, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna outline it for you, okay? A is welcome everyone, okay? B is to set some house rules. What are the three house rules? Phone off. Phone off. All right, great. Two, no question, no question, right? Hold off all your questions, okay? Number three is what? Open mind, okay? So all you do is house rules. Like everybody, you know, usually in the family, there are house rules. Well, in our meeting, there are house rules, okay? Number one, you want to turn your phone off to vibrate so that you will not, you know, so your phone won't interrupt the information to affect other people. Uh, Concentration. Number two, if you have any questions, keep in mind that throughout the presentations, your question might be answered. So hold them off. If at the presentation you still have questions, we'll be glad to answer you at the end. Now, why do we do that? It's important we set that up front. Because if you didn't set it up front and somebody in the audience and they don't know any better, and they start raising their hand in the back. And if a speaker up here, they're not experienced, and they don't know what to do. Hey, hey, I have a question. And then if they are not experienced enough, they start addressing the questions. My gosh, it could, it could open a can of worms. Because that question, then comes the next question, or oh, what about me, or oh, what about me? Then you can't control the, 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 the flow of the energy, okay? So you just say, you know, hold the question off because throughout the presentation, they might be answered, okay? Now, the number three is keep an open mind as information might change your life, but you gotta keep an open mind. Okay, now, number, so number one, number two, and number three thing that he or she does, the host will do, is to play the videos, okay? So we're gonna show you 
a few short films, a short videos, okay? Don't say we're gonna show you a few videos. People go, videos, oh my gosh, how long is the video? So we're gonna show you a very short clips of the video that kind of talk about the, related to the subject that we do. They are not endorsing our product, it's come from third party, but they're talking about relating the subject, the, the, the technology that we have. So that it's important that we make that disclaimer because we don't wanna show, you know, whoever that is, Barbara Walter, whoever, and then, and then mislead people to think that they are endorsing our product. So that disclaimer is very important, okay? So show the video and then the number four thing that they will do is to tee up the first speaker okay now when you tee up somebody your job is to say a few good points about that person but not to tell that person's story it's important to understand that and also as some of the techniques when you're teeing up people you don't say the name right away you say the boom, 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 the good stuff. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Mr. Samson Lee. Then you say the name at the very end. You don't say, well, the next person I'm gonna bring up, his name is Sammy, and he's da 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 It just doesn't have that flow. Remember, we want the flow, okay? So the next person I'm gonna bring up is, he's a gentleman, you know, whatever the good things of the next person is, not, not to tell the story, but one or two or maximum three <coughs> key points about the next speaker and then you will say the name of that person. Now, it's very important when we tee up people that we tee up fact. We don't, we don't tee up like, for example, I mean sometimes it's important when you're teeing up somebody, make sure you get to know that person before you tee them up. So let's say for example, if you were to tee up Mr. Dave Toll, to say that Dave is a world traveler, traveler around the world, you know, it, people that don't know might be okay, but people that know in the room, oh, it takes a little bit of difference to, di audiences some people are looking for the one thing to disbelieve you so if you say that one thing that's not correct some people might use that and discredit the entire presentation okay so it's important to find a little bit facts about that person and tee up the next speaker okay so after you tee up the, the, the next person then what you do is let's say for example if Peter is the MC so Peter will tee up and welcome the next speaker so as the next speaker come up you do not run off. You don't run off the stage until you do a handshake or a hug, or whatever you are comfortable with. Then you hand off the stage, you, you leave the stage and let the next person take off, okay? Um, take the stage. Now, that's part number one. Part number two would be the first half speaker, okay? <clears throat> first half speaker. Now, this person's role is first to talk about his introduce himself, a little short ID. Now the MC or the host do not do any ID. Only the first half speaker will do the ID, meaning their background, the story. Now the reason why the first half speaker will do the ID or the testimonial is because you want to be able to relate to the audience. Because if the audience will identify with you, they will buy from you. If they don't like you, they don't know where you're coming from, they, why should I buy you? Do you know what I'm saying? So they, you, you have to create your own ID, and that ID is no more than two minutes, okay? Two to three minutes maximum. So you do two to three minutes, then your role, your job, is to go talk about the company and the product. Now that's the easiest part, because company and product, it's in the what? In the computer, in the PowerPoint. So you don't really need to do anything, okay? So except to kind of, you know, obviously you want to have get a smooth flow from slide to slide. So you wanna learn to practice a little bit, but don't read from the slide. And by the way, if you must look at the screen, keep in mind a lot of times technology these days, <coughs> when, it, when it show on the project on the screen, there's a computer in front of you. So instead of do, looking at this, kind of look at, you know, kind of glance at it and get, pick up the bullets and, and go at it. And some of the etiquettes as a speaker, when you speak, when you look at something or, and when you write something, it's very important to always try to do a three quarter of a face facing the audience. Even to write something, if you write something like this, that's not polite because your entire back is facing the audience, okay? So try to always keep a three quarter of a face looking at the audience, okay, when you write or when, even when you read things, okay? If you, if you must read from the screen, for some reason you can't read it from the computer, try to do it from a three quarter of an angle so that you still are looking at the audience. And so there are times I've seen people literally reading from there and the back is to the audience. And so you're losing the touch, you're losing the feel because everything is about feeling, everything's about energy. So you wanna keep, this is, look, everything I'm teaching is easy. The toughest part is to, to it's little, little tiny differences, but it's those little tiny stuff that make a difference in your presentation and in what you do, okay? So your job is to do your ID, two to three minutes. I mean, I normally 
to do a two minute gig, it's max already, okay? And so the, the, you need to follow the PowerPoint, the company, the product, okay? Then, you, then your job is to tee up the next speaker, okay? Your job is to tee up the next speaker. Again, when you tee up somebody, you say the name, what? At the very last, okay? When we were in Malaysia, we have a brand new person. We just gone over the speaker training. And when, when that person comes on, they go, the next person I bring up is Mr. Samson Lee. And da, 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 da. Oh my. No, you gotta do the, the, the build, it's a building up the movie. You build, like when you watch a movie, you don't tell the ending. The name is the ending, okay? You just build up the, create that, create that, that, that mysteriousness, okay? Dun, dun, dun. Wow, okay? So you just got, look, this is performance. Like, how many have you been to Lua? in Hawaii. Luau, it's same show, but every time the performer performs like it's the very first time. So you need to have that, okay? We need to learn to do that, okay? So now, so that's a, the front half speaker. Now, the second, the third part of the presentation will be the second half speaker, okay? Now, again, the second half speaker comes up, what is he or she supposed to do? To do a quick ID. Why? Because the audience, you want the audience to be able to relate to them. Who are you? Why should I listen to you? So when you speak from your heart, tell your story, your background, hey, you never know. Maybe the first half speaker, the story didn't touch people, but maybe the second half speaker, their testimonial are able to move and touch somebody. You never know, okay? So <clears throat> second half speaker, the ID, then the compensation plan, right? The second half speaker, what, what does he or she talk about? The opportunity side, right? The comp plan, okay? So, then the third thing that the second half speaker do, it does is what? Call up the testimonial speakers, okay? Now, I like to choose, so this is testimonial speakers. I like to choose two to three, I mean three to four, maximum four, usually, testimonial stories. Why? Because if you go four or more, it's way too much, okay? So unless you have a huge event, then you can call up maybe maximum five. But you know, if you got one person that go on and on and on, that kills the meeting. I think you know, three or four is very perfect. And when you call testimonial speakers, guess what, you wanna call different background, maybe women, men, you know, uh, uh, the, the different diversity. Because if it's all, like, let's say the front half speaker is a woman, the back half speaker is a woman. They go, a man sitting over there say, wow, this is a woman business. And then you go, a bunch of testimonials, all women. They go, oh, I'm a man, I can't do this. So it's important that you, you, you select different background to, to target different audiences, okay? So now, so we have four parts, right? Then we'll talk about three parts. Number four part that we do is testimonial speakers, okay? Again, testimonial speakers, is three to four people max. And each one of them is two to three minutes. Remember, we only got one hour. So if you've got someone that goes and talk about five minutes and you, you got four of them, four times five is how many? 20. 20 minutes, it's way too long, okay? So three to four people max. Okay, maximum three to four people on the story and testimonial. These people's job is to tell their stories. That is it, nothing more, nothing less. No coaching, no preaching, no judging, nothing, okay? Because it's an OPP, it's a presentation, okay? So the most important part of this whole gig is the testimonials because it is, it is through the testimonials that we create, that bring everything up at the emotional high, okay? So this is where the three to four. Now, if you got someone as a testimonial speaker that goes on and on and on and on, guess what? The audiences, the emotion is got going down. When the emotion going down, guess what? No sale. You kill the sales for other people. That's why I want to keep it short and tight, okay? Two to three minutes max. Now, so we build this thing up by doing the following. The answering the three questions, right? Is this gig for real? Well, is it for real? Why do you suppose we pay the videos? Okay, we pay the third party, and these are not uh, the video done by us. This is video done by the media, done by third party. That is to answer that question, is this thing for real? We need that, because third party edification does a lot better than you and I talking about our, than ourselves, because it's not from us. So that builds credibility, and that also builds what? Credibility, okay? So believability. People say, ah, okay, now, oh, you know what? I, I know KNBC. I know Channel 9. I know, you know. So these 
it, 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 it brings <coughs> the audiences to understand that, wow, you know what? This thing I'm beginning to accept and embrace. Remember, the emotion is right here. So as they watch KMBC, they watch you know whatever the video that we're showing from the media, it begin to build up that, that believability, okay? Now, then the next thing we do is we do the company, we uh, do the logic, right? The PowerPoint talked about the company. Then also, we talk about the product. <coughs> company and product, those are facts. These are logic. We are using logic, you know, you attack the logic and then back it up by emotion, okay? So we do the, the, the is this thing for real? The number one question is done by the video, company, and products. To answer this question, is this thing for real, okay? Now, what's in it for me? Well, so as you're doing this, you are bringing up the emotion, slowly but surely, okay? Now, if someone is open-minded and they're sitting over here and they watch all this stuff as we proceed with the presentation, you can't help but they started to believe, started to seeing something, okay? Then, the, the, the first, the, the second speaker, what does he talk about or she talk about? The compensation plan. So remember the second question, what's in it for me? Well, the second question, what's in it for me? Thank you. Is the, the money part, the compensation plan, okay? Comp plan. So in the, through the comp plan, we are building up the emotion and then instead of saying, well, let me tell you what's in it for you. Instead of saying that, just let the PowerPoint do the job. What's in it for them? People have imagination. Let their own creativity run, okay? So what's in it for them? They go, oh, okay, now I can see this, this is a way to make some money. So that's, we do that by showing the compensation plan through the second half speaker. So the third question, what was the third question? Can I do this? Can, can I do this? this? That's when we do the, can I do this? That's when we do the what? The testimonials. Now, if someone's sitting in the audience and they look at Li Ming, for example, wow, a single mom. She never done this kind of business before, but she can be successful. If she can do it, so can I. If they look at Tina, wow, Tina, a housekeeper. If she can do this, speaks broken English, I too can do it. If they look at Winnie, wow, Winnie's 64 years old. At her age, if she can do this, so can I. Okay, so that's why it's important that we do this testimonial so people's imagination sort of spark is, oh, you know what? If he or she can do it, so can I. Sometimes people don't like to take people to the presentation because, oh, they're not a powerful speaker. You know, you can always turn things around. You can say, look, if, you know, you are better looking than, than him. If he can do it, so can you. Or say, you know what, you can talk better than him or you can do better than her. So you can turn it to your edge. So don't judge a speaker, don't judge the opportunity by, by the present, the speaker. You need to learn how to turn things around, okay? So can I do this? That's when we do the, 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 the testimonial. So through the whole design of the, 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 the presentation is to address and answer those three questions. And so if you learn the tricks of the tray, like some of the little tips that we're gonna share with you, everything's easy. The PowerPoint, you all can do it, you all can read it. But it's in the delivery process. It's not what you say, it's on how you deliver the information that make you an effective speaker, okay? So, this is overall, in a nutshell, is why we do what we do. This is the psychology of the meeting. Now, some people, and I notice so many, especially the more educated they are, the more high-tech they are, they have a tremendous, a huge need of urgency to go modify our PowerPoint. They go, oh, this is no good. I'm gonna do it this way. I have a better way of doing it. Listen, listen, when you guys are making more money than we do, then you can modify it, okay? So, because whatever we've got is proven, it's working. Don't go change something, okay? Now, obviously, I'm open-minded, we are all open-minded. If you feel there's something better, talk to us. We will, we will look, take a look at it. But everything that we have done has been translated to different language throughout the world. If you leave the U.S. and you start traveling and look at different parts of the world and look at Jeunesse, you're like, wow. You know, what amazes me is that the PowerPoint that we have, it translates so many different language, and you know, we have so many different people talking about the same thing, you go, wow, I mean, you, you haven't, you, I mean, there's a sense of feeling of accomplishment, wow, you know, it's amazing. So that's why when we change something, gotta be careful. It doesn't get triggered somewhere else. You want something that's duplicatable so that people can, can copy and duplicate, okay? So, is this clear so far? Yes. All right, now, so I'm gonna talk about some of the to-dos and some of the things to watch out because everything, the PowerPoint, all that, you could do. So the key thing on how you can 
effectively do a presentation either one on one or either in a big presentation is really on master learning how to tell your story. Because everything is about story. True or not true? Yes. yes. All I do day in, day out, here I sell other some other country's story. When I'm elsewhere, I sell you guys stories. So that's all I do, tell story, story. So we gotta know when you identify people, when you look at people, you know what their needs are, you know when to tell what story, when to say what, and that, that would what make you an effective communicator, okay? Now, so talking about story, so how do you tell your ID? How do you create your ID? Because it's your ID, your story, that can make or break the presentation, okay? So let's talk about how to develop your ID. Your ID, again, you develop your ID around surrounding <laughs> these three topics, okay? Number one. Who are you? Who are you? Who am I? Now, this is not a philosophical philosophical question. Okay? People are spending days on who am I? Okay, <laughs> that's another lesson for another day. Okay, so who are you? Meaning your background. You know, I got a guy coming to me. You know, Kim. You know, I love your question. Who am I? I spend days thinking about it. I said, listen, that's a whole different game. Okay, so I said, let's talk about business for now. Okay, so who am I? Meaning, what's your background? What do you do for a living? Okay, so who are you? Okay, now, reason for that is. Because we want different personality, different backgrounds, different walks of life to be able to relate to different people. Okay? So, like, you know, let's say for example, Ivy. Ivy is a college grad. I graduated from college. I'm an accountant. And so, when you say that, oh, she's an accountant. So, you might have somebody in the audience that's an accountant. Let's say that I have another who's a doctor. So, you know, this guy is a chiropractor. So, I'm a chiropractor. Go, ooh, he's a chiropractor. So, when you tell your story, the objective is to tell the audience's pain and their frustrations through your story. Instead of saying, hey, you know what, Sammy? You're stuck. Instead of saying that, you saying you are stuck. Because if I attack him, he'll kill me, okay? So, but you are trying to tell, you know, like in English, you, you know, there, there's an expression. You know, the wall, it has e have ears. So if you tell the wall, the wall can hear. So you, your objectives through your story, you talk about your pain, your frustrations, and how, I mean, of course not to be negative, not to like downpour on your whole story, okay? But, you know, the pain and frustrations so that people go, you know what? Me too. The reason why it's called ID is to identify. If the audiences identify with you, guess what? You got a sale, okay? So imagine this, you know the chickens, you know how when they peck the rice? So pe 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 pick the rice, they're buying, okay? So when they, when they identify their pecking, you got to sell, okay? So now, who am I? Okay, write it down. What do I see here? What <clears throat> do I see in Janice? Okay, what is it you saw? <clears throat> What is it that make you make the decision? Now, you know, this has to come from you and your heart. I can't mean, because everybody says, oh, I saw a great product. Oh, I saw a great product. That, that won't cut it. It has to be something from your heart. I mean, Sammy has a great story. I mean, you know, he, he saw this as his vehicle for his plan B for his retirement, as he can't rely on Social Security anymore after all those years of work. So, I mean, when he tells that story, I'm sure people that are thinking about retirement or near retirement, they are probably in the same position Sammy is, okay? So, what do you see here in Janice? And that has to come from you. And a lot of times people, when they write their story, they want to sound intellectual, they want to, you know, have it perfectly poised and perfectly phrased, ain't gonna cut it, okay? So we can tell when people memorize their speech. So you just gotta, you know, learn to, learn to do that part, okay? Now, what do I see in Janice? And number three, as a result of making that decision, joining Janice, where are you today? Or where are you going, okay? So as a result, okay? As a result, this is where I am or where I am going, okay? Now, sometimes, especially people that are kind of new, when they look at something like this, they go, you know what? I can't tell people where I am. I haven't made money yet. Don't worry about it. It's not, look, let's say that you're new. You haven't made money yet, you say, listen, I'm new in this business, but I finally saw a vehicle whereby I can da 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 whatever that is you want to do. So if you are not where you, are, you want to be at yet, that's okay. Say, so I can now see a way to 
where you're going. Tell people where you're going. You have to say, I hope, I wish that through this vehicle that I can be da da da. Wish and hope don't lack that force, lack that energy. Okay? You say, I believe through this opportunity that I can da 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 da, whatever that might be. Okay? So don't go, I wish, I hope, hope and wish is not strong enough. So, and a lot of times, actually being a speaker helps a lot. Because if you're on stage, you're telling people, you know what, I believe through this, I can be all, I finally see a way, I've always wanted to become a millionaire. But I, I, all these years, I never knew how. But at least finally, I saw a way out. I saw hope that I can accomplish my dream, my vision, become a millionaire. So when you say that, when you encounter challenges, when times get tough, you can't quit. Because you told people that you saw a way out, they can make a million, okay? <laughs> so you gotta stick with it. So anyway, so the, write your story around these three things. And the reason why I say why, because when you reason out your logic in your head, then when you deliver that story, become very clear. So have men, when you tell story, when you present, the most important things are mental clarity. Because when you present, you help a lot of people in the room. So it's important to have a mental clarity. If you're really foggy that day, talk to somebody, say, listen, you know, either you yourself defog yourself out there, okay, before you come and do something. And that's why it's very important to understand. When we do a meeting, and if, if let's say that, you know, um, and when, you, when you're a speaker, you gotta teach the team that if you are gonna be a speaker, if there are some people that are negative, or some people that have some issue, don't, before the meeting, say, no, no, there are times I go to a meeting and go, hey, Kim, I have some issue. You know, how come, I'm like, I'm trying to psych up for the presentation. And here there are people coming and dumping everything on you. So you gotta learn to shield people away from the speaker. Let them do the gig first. And then usually if they do that to you, you have to be experienced enough to say, you know what, that's a great question. I'll get to it at the end. Okay, let, let's finish the presentation, then I'll answer your question. Don't try to, because you know, listen, I mean, it, it, it takes a lot of years of experience to ignore when people just dump on you, especially when you're about to get on stage. So it's important that you kind of learn these little, little things, okay? Now, so develop your story. If you haven't done so, do it at home, okay? Finish the story, two to three minutes, okay? Tell that story, because it's that story that's gonna carry you through when times get tough or when you're in front of people. You know, look, I mean, you gotta be yourself. Let's say, for example, <clears throat> Patrick, perfect example. Patrick is a very low-key kind of guy, but Patrick is a very believable kind of guy. But Patrick, until the day Patrick learns to tell your story, Patrick, if you want to make it really successful in this business, Patrick, you gotta learn to tell your story. I mean, just, you don't need to be like, hype, 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 no need. You just gotta be yourself and tell them, listen, people, I mean, I wonder, I mean, Patrick has a lot of, a lot of businesses, you know? Patrick has a lot of traditional businesses. I wonder why he's doing this. But Patrick never wanted to tell his story, but he just wanted to do it. So you got to Patrick willing to be able to, willing to share your story to people. People are curious, you, you're a rich guy, why are you doing this? So, but when you tell the story, I bet you people will sign up because it's very effective, okay? Now, so develop your story, two to three minutes and tell the story. You just gotta go with your flow, go with your own feelings, okay? So now, key things, some of the things not to do. When you tell your stories, guys, your job right here is to the emotional peak. So therefore, when you come up, do not preach people, do not train people, do not coach people, do not ask people questions. Some people come up and say, would you agree with me, Facebook this and Facebook that? I'm like, ah, dude, that's not your role, okay? Your role is to tell your story, okay? So let's keep things very simple. You are up here to tell your story. Who you are, what you see in here, and where you're going, and as a result, what has the business done for you? If it hasn't done anything for you, where do you see yourself going through this business, okay? So <clears throat> no preaching, no coaching, and... Questions. No questions, and don't say, you know what? You gotta do this. We all gotta do this together. No, that's not the time, okay? And also, if you feel that the speaker didn't quite done right on the comp plan or didn't quite done right on the product, don't go make up for the speaker. Say, wow, well, you know what? He didn't talk about this, but you know, we're spiritual. No, that part is done. Whatever is done and done and passed, gone. Let's deal with what we have, okay? Your deal, just, if everyone just do their role, do their part, we got it all done, okay? So when you come up, don't attack people. Just tell your story. You tell their pain, tell through their frustration, 
but tell it through your own stories. I mean, you tell a real story. Don't make it up and, and you know, so tell your own true story and, and get it done. Okay, now, so clear so far? Now, some of the etiquette. <coughs> so I'm going to talk about the flow of the meeting. <coughs> when you have the, uh, uh, when we interchange, when we change speakers, like I said earlier, when you change speakers, when you ask to speak, take center stage. It's important that you Take center stage and you scan the room. Look, look, at, look at the audiences. Eye contact is very, very important. There's a lot of times people, you know, and, and, and it's understandably so. Sometimes people get very nervous and they're afraid to look at people. They just look like stare in the air. <laughs> if you do that, you can't relate to people. People think you might have something to hide or, or something. So just, it's okay. Get comfortable. Look at people's eyes and, and, and select those people that are smiling at you. You know, sometimes uncomfortable. And, and, and a lot of times when, it, when you have a new speaker, they just pick one person and they just talk to that one person, okay? <laughs> Don't do that. He or she will get very embarrassed. Like, why is he looking at me, you know? And so try to scan the room. I mean, look, if you're nervous in the beginning, which is okay, kind of scan, you know, scan. I normally scan the room because you want to give them love and give energy. And people can feel. I mean, we're all human beings. We can feel things. So kind of scan the room and look at the audience. And people like to sting at you like that. I mean, you know, you can just glance through them. I mean, now that I get quite years of experience, you know what I do? When they stare at me, I stare back, you know? <laughs> so, and I like to give love, give energy, and sometimes they open up, okay? But don't take any chance. If you're new, kind of, you know, play with it a little bit and just kind of, you know, jump into the room. Okay, now, take center stage, and when you talk, <clears throat> try not to go pace back and forth. Because if you go pace back and forth, the audiences will get very dizzy. Because they try to fo follow you now. But what, if you must, like I talk very animated, so I like to talk with my hands. So you can do hand gesture rather than movement, okay? So you, your hands can move, but instead of your body moving back and forth, okay? So, and uh, don't rock back and forth, just, you know, talk with your arm, talk with your hands. And so um, usually when you are a presenter, uh, you know, come in, you know, professional attire. It's very important because it, it sends out a message, okay? So today is training, so hopefully I'm excused, but um, <laughs> it's like a 10 o'clock. But uh, we, we, when you come to a presentation, gentlemen with a tie and a suit, and the uh, ladies, you know, jacket, and thank you so much, Samson. <clears throat> so, um, take center stage now. If you have other people behind you, please do not look at those people. Look at the whom? Audience. The audiences. Because the audiences are listening and they are watching, okay? So everything we do up front in the stage forms an impression. Okay, so now, so the MC host, welcome everyone, and I constantly have to remind myself, smile, you know? So, because when you smile, it's like a mirror effect, you know, the audiences reflect. So smile, and I always have, I mean, I've done it so many years, I always have this thing in my back, and say, smile, you know, smile, you know? So you just have to keep reminding yourself to smile, okay, now. And then, introduce your front half speaker, the front half speaker take stage, then the front half speaker tee, tee up the second half speaker, take stage, then, the second half speaker, when he or she calls for testimonials, I would like to call the next couple of people to share their story with you. So I will call three to four people all at the same time. I don't like to call one at a time. Why? Because one, one at a time takes what? Takes time. They come up, they go back down, okay? So, and I call them up, boom, all at the same time. And when you are call up, either your front half speaker, second half speaker, testimonial, when you call up, get up and run up. Because don't go, you know, just when you're called up, come on up. I mean, literally, I have people go, you know, it happened in L.A., it happened right here, I think. I call up a guy, I go, hmm. <laughs> now, we have to learn to be experienced. Sometimes, you know, in the very beginning, I didn't know why. I go, oh, come on, you know. And then the sponsor go, oh, come on, go up. And they create this storm, and this thing, like, people are looking like, oh, well, you know. So it, when, if and when that happens, you should be quick enough to dump it and just move on to the next one, okay? Don't beg people, because remember, everything we do, it's a show, it's a performance, okay? So don't, don't, don't sort of convince people. So anyway, when you call up, get up and come on up here, okay? So when the, the testimonial speaker come up, they line up in the back here, but don't get all like so far dispersed apart, because if you're so far apart, it seems like there's no flow of energy. You want the people, people to feel that it's a family, it, there's warmth in it, okay? So when the people come up, the three of you or four of you can shake hand or high five each other. Don't be like not looking at each other, okay? So just form that feeling of family. It, you know, you'd be amazed as you gain more and more years of experience, everything we do up here, it, it has somehow, somewhat, something about the stage, it has amazing power. 
So, but use it wisely, use it the right way, okay? So, um, and so whatever we do, the brand new people, whatever you do up here, it forms an impression. And it also, for some people, they form a judgment of the opportunity because of what happened up here, okay? So if those three people, four people, testimony come up, shake hand, high five each other, and then, you know, when, when, when the, the speaker, let's say, let's say the first person is Peter, say, well, Peter, let's welcome Peter to share the story. So when Peter takes the stage, you, as a second half speaker, you stay back, okay? Don't stand next to him because you don't want to undermine his stage presence, okay? So you stay in the back and then let him talk. So Peter, if you're the, the, the runner testimony, when you are called to be the testimony speaker, you need to take center stage. It, 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 it just gives the energy to the audiences, okay? So you take center stage and you do your gig, and when you're done, then the, 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 the speaker will welcome, then you take, you take back your role, I mean your, your place, and then the, the second person will come up, and then the third person will come up. Now, when you're finished, don't walk back to your seat. We wanna dismiss everybody all at once. Why? Because one, we don't wanna waste time. Two, what if Peter does deliver the most powerful testimonial, and as he walks back, People start going to him, or the attention going to him. And the poor guy, the second guy, trying to come up and talk. The, all the attention went to him already. So we don't want that. We want to get a fairness to all the speakers. So when you're finished, over here, second one, finish, the third one over here. Now, you, as we are becoming more and more experienced, we have to watch the presentation for all of us. When you have someone that goes on and on and on about who they are, what do you do? We gotta save the audience. You know what you do as a speaker? Because we're up here, we can't do, we cannot do that, okay? So, and, and, and when you are up here, kind of keep an eye on the back, because if you are going way too long, there will be somebody in the back and go like that, that means <laughs> cut it, okay? So now, so let's say that for some reason this guy didn't get it, or this girl didn't get it, and just keep going on, and you kind of move a gesture in a little bit. If it didn't stop, you move it a little bit, and then move a little bit and stay there. I mean, he really doesn't stop. You say, if somebody in the audience says clap, and then we'll grab the mic away from him, okay? You just have to do that. Some people just love to talk, okay? So just, we just have to find a, a nice way, a nice gesture, and just kind of break up the, the thing, because we don't want the energy to go down, 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 okay? So again, when you come up here, no, no, no coaching, no teaching, because look, this is an OPP. When you coach and when you preach, that's at the very, that's at the training. This is the OPP. And so, and therefore, to bring to the next point, when you are the MC or the, you're the host, <clears throat> when you come up, do not promote events. Not at the very beginning. Because at the very beginning, you have some people that don't know what it's all about. And here you are, start promoting Las Vegas, blah, 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 blah. They go, what is this? You know, they don't feel comfortable. Again, everything we do forms an impression. So, but as a second half speaker, when you dismiss all the, the, the testimonials, then you come, you take back center stage and you do your closing remark, whatever that might be. So one, no need to do some elongated and elaborated closing, everything. Remember, that emotional line is at the peak, everything is done already. No need to do some smart clothesline. I mean, just do whatever that works for you, whatever you feel comfortable with. And so by closing that event, and just let the people know the next upcoming event. Let's say, for example, we have events just like this every Thursday, or we have, let's say that we happen to have a Super Saturday, this coming Saturday, say, you know what? We have an amazing event coming, this says Super Saturday, da, da, da. So you can promote that event at the very end, as a second half speaker. So with that, I thank you all for very much for coming, and you know, hope to work with each and every single one of you. Thank you, clap, done. And a story, okay? Really thank you all, and I hope that through this test, I mean, look, tonight you guys did this, I know when we have a real audience, you guys will smoke it, no problem. Because if you guys done this, in real deal, no problem. So just master your story, and in the beginning, like learn to host, learn to do, I mean, we now, tonight, we know many, many of you, we're gonna schedule you in these meetings for April, because you guys have it already in, in you. And so coming to the meeting, and I was taught many, many years ago that whoever speak in front of the room make the most money. I said, sign me up, okay? <laughs> so, and you all have the practice now, but the key thing is learning is one thing, implementing what you learn is, is very important. So uh, when you do a very good testimonial, we say keep it, that means keep it, okay? Some people, when they do a very good testimonial, the next time they go, oh, I'm gonna do something different. Because I'm gonna have, um, I, I told my story too many times, I wanna reinvent it. Don't, when it's working, keep it, okay? So, I mean, as you grow, as you make more money, become more successful, obviously, you know, what you see in the opportunity, what you are today, Day is a lot higher notch, you can say that later on. But as far as your story touching your audiences, keep it tight, keep it, keep it strong, 
and keep it from the heart, then we all win together. So with that, thank you very much. Promo Saturday. Super Saturday, we're going to do a big training. Okay, so thank you very much. <laughs>